when you start the software, you get the startup screen. Here, you can set up a new tree by specifying the active players, their stacks and the blinds. First of all, here you can set the table size. For a heads up tree with small blind on the button, select heads up. And otherwise, select either 10 handed or 6 handed. And after that, you can select the active players here. I'll just select small blind versus big blind for this example. Now here, it's very important to always keep the number of players you select as low as possible. Uh, preferably two. So for example, even if under the gun, middle position, cutoff and button are present in the hand, but don't do anything important, then you're better off by just leaving them out. This is mainly because a tree will become very complex very fast if you have multiple players in it. However, it's also because if there's more than two active players in the tree, the software will no longer be able to enumerate the calculations and will be forced to base its results on a large number of simulations. And this will cause a slight error in all your results. On the other hand, if you just use two players, you'll get trees that will be relatively easy to work with. And also the software will be able to enumerate all the results, meaning that they will be mathematically accurate. So if possible, just stick to two players. Here, under Start Tree, you will be able to select in which phase the first decision of your tree will be. It is recommended to always start preflop, like in any normal hand. However, every once in a while you may run into a spot where starting at the flop, turn or river will make more sense. So for that purpose you have this option. And with this button, you can set the small blind, the big blind, the rake, the cap and also the rake back. Finally, you can also add additional money to the pot here. And I'll show that in a minute. I'll just close this menu. And with this button you can set the stacks of the active players. Currently, we have an active small blind and big blind, so there's a little star behind their names. Now, you can also edit the stacks of the inactive players here, but that's completely unimportant. After all, they're not in the tree anyhow. You can just ignore them. And with start tree, you can start editing your tree. Before I do that, let me just go over the buttons at the bottom here. This button will restore the last tree you had in your last session. This button will allow you to import hand histories from Poker Tracker and Hold'em Manager. This button links to the instructional videos. And this button links to the written manual. Finally, this button in the upper right will switch the software to tournament mode, but I'll get into that in a later video. For now, I'll just start our tree with small blind versus big blind, blinds 50 cent one dollar, rake at 0% and a stack of 100 dollars for both players. Ok, so here we are. In the upper left here, we have small blind first decision button and at this point the main field is empty. And here at the bottom, if we want to edit the stacks or blinds at this point, we can still do that with these buttons. You can use this button to edit the blinds and this button for the stacks. Ok, let's edit the stack sizes for a minute by clicking on the stacks button. I'll change the small blinds and big blind stack sizes to $200. Ok, and as you can see under the blue numbers, small blind stack size is now indeed $200. And let's change the blinds to $1, $2 with the blinds plus rake button. That's 1 and 2. And again, the blinds have now changed. And the pot has now become $3 to reflect the money in the pot at this point. And it should indeed be $3 since small blind has posted $1 and big blind has posted $2. Oké, okay, and now let's add some chips to the pot, again with the blinds plus rake button. We see here that the pot is $3 at this point. And if I add $10 and press enter, then the pot has now changed to $13. This option of adding chips to the pot can be used if a player has posted, but you don't want them in the hand. Or if you want to account for anties. I'll just reset it to zero for now. And press OK. OK, so let's now start by building a simple 5 betting tree. If you move your mouse in the general area of a decision button, its color will change to yellow and action buttons will appear on top of it. If you click one of these buttons, they will add an action to the decision. Here we have buttons that will add a fold, call or raise action. And with this button you can toggle between limit holder mode and no limit mode. Right now we're in limit holder mode. 
If I click Race here, the big blind will make the appropriate limit hold'em raise of twice the blind. However, for now I'd like to do a no limit hand. I'll just delete this action here by selecting it and then pressing Del on my keyboard. And I'll just switch to no limit mode. And now when I mouse over race, a sub menu with race options will appear. We have these quick buttons, which you can double click, a slider, and finally I can click this number and enter an amount manually. For now I'll just let small blind race pot by double clicking the pot option. And now we have small blind racing pot with all of his hands. And the action is now on the big blind. However, small blind is probably not racing with all of his hands, but just some of them. To edit the condition with which small blind is racing, double click it. And let's just use the slider here to set it to the top 40%. You can of course also select these hands by clicking them. And if you want to select multiple hands, then press your mouse down, keep it pressed down and mouse over everything you want to select. And I'll just remove that again. I'll go over the other buttons in this menu in a later video. For now, I'll just press done. Okay, so we now have small blind racing with the top 40% of hands. On the other hand, if small blind does not have one of these hands, he will probably fold. For that, just click the fold button to add a fold action. And we will just let small blind fold all hands here. Please note that it is not necessary to make the fold condition the inverse of the race action. In the way the software works, it treats all actions and conditions from top to bottom. So, it will first treat the race action to see if small blind holds a hand within the racing range. Should this be the case, then the software will immediately move on to the next action and everything below it will be skipped. So if small blind holds a raising hand, it doesn't matter that it's also folded by the fold action, since the fold action will not be reached anyhow. So, in other words, what it says here is that small blind will fold all other hands that have not been treated yet by the raise action. Now, let's make big blind 3 bet pot or fold. And we'll make him 3 bet with the top 15% of hands. And then we'll let small blind race pot or fold. And we'll let small blind race pot with the top 6% of hands. Now, let's say that at this point we would like to make an EV run to get the expected values in our tree. If I press the calculate button to perform such an EV run, we get an error message. And this node has lighted up in red. This is because the software has come across a scenario where it didn't have any instructions on what to do. Specifically that scenario is, small blind races to 6, big blind races to 18, small blind races to 54, and at that point we arrive at this node, and the hand just ends, rather abruptly. And now, given the fact that information is still missing, the software is forced to terminate the EV run. This is because EV calculations are only possible if all scenarios are accounted for. If there's any hand that's being run through the tree where the tree just ends, then the software will end the run and give an error message. Now let's say that we would like to get some data anyhow. Although our tree is not yet complete and we don't have enough data yet for EV calculations, we still might want to see some data like equities and frequencies. This is actually possible, uh, even if the tree is incomplete. For that, either press F5 or this button in the toolbar, and this will perform what's called an equity run. And in an equity run, the software will simply run a large number of simulations through the tree and base its results on that. So, even if your tree is incomplete, you can still get data like equities and frequencies. However, the fields for the expected value will remain empty. If you want EVs, then you will need to provide the software with a completed tree, but for an intermediate result in an incomplete tree, you can just use an equity run. Okay, having said that, let's finish our tree. Let's let big blind race all in with his top 6% of hands. And fold otherwise. And finally, 
Let's make small blind call with queens plus and ace king. By the way, if we edit the amount of big blinds raise here, we see that this amount is $200, which is the exact size of his starting stack, and therefore the maximum amount that he could possibly raise at this point. However, should you pick some larger number, and OK, then this number will still be accepted, and the player will simply raise the maximum amount that he can raise. So there's no need to work out the exact all-in amount. The program will simply do this for you. So, let's compute. And we get another error message here. And again, a note has lighted up in red. The message tells us that the software had a problem in processing this particular run. Small blind races, big blind races, small blind forebats and big blind pushes. And then it ends here. And the reason for that is that it is not specified here what small blind would do in the spot if he held pocket aids. To solve this, we still need to tell the program what small blind actually does with all these other hands. And I'll just do that by making small blind fold them. And if we now compute, the EV calculation was now successful. Now one thing to be learned from this is that in order to prevent an incomplete tree, always make sure that you end each decision with an action that applies for all hands. And in that way, your tree should always be complete. If you try to perform an EV run in an incomplete tree, you'll get an error like this that notifies you of at what point the problem occurred.